One of the guys that knows something about the little bit of the magnitude of this rivalry is former Razorback quarterback Bill Montgomery. and He's been kind enough to give us some time this morning. We'll talk to Bill in just a sec. It's Hogs versus Horns. We're talking about it all week long. It's presented by Crane Hyundai of Fayetteville. Find them at cranehyundaiofayetteville.com or on West Fox Glove Drive in Northwest Arkansas. Also by Arvest Bank. They have a wide range of banking services, including loans, deposits, treasury management, credit cards, mortgage loans, and mortgage services. Find them at arvest.com, equal housing lender, member FDIC. And by Wills RV, five miles west of exit 72, on 549 in Springdale, lifetime warranties on every new RV they sell. The best brands at the best prices. Always at Wheels RV, five miles west of exit 72 off 549 in Springdale. Seek, explore, and discover with Wheels RV. Bill, appreciate you making some time for us this morning. Got a, ch- a, can- a chance to catch up with John Reese this past Sunday on Huddle Up, our podcast with John David White. And he was joking with me. One of the reasons he wanted to become your roommate is because he felt like he'd get more passes thrown to him. Did, did you throw more passes to him because he was your roommate, Bill? <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> but John John was a was a great part of our team, and he caught plenty of passes. And he was a dad gum fast; they couldn't they couldn't had a hard time catching him if he was in the open field. So, uh, <laughs> no, he he was going to get the same number of throws whether whether he was a roommate or not. <laughs> now I know you're fr- you went to high school in Carrollton. You're you're currently in Dallas, right, Bill? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, that's correct. Okay. So when you look at Arkansas and its ability to recruit Texas, with Oklahoma and the Longhorns coming over the SEC, how do you think that's either going to help or hinder Arkansas's chances of getting quality high school football players in Texas? Well, I think it's a ter- – first of all, let me just – I'm thrilled by this uh, – what, what's happening with the SEC and – and with the University of Texas and Oklahoma, and I, I really think it's a, it's a great um, re-entry into uh, what's what's been a very sad thing to watch as our recruiting in Texas went down over the years. And I'm I'm a big believer that it's gonna it's it may take two or three years, but in Texas and Texas A&M there are 350. 350 plus or minus Division One athletes in the state of Texas. We're not getting our fair share of of those athletes right now, and I think it's it's going to be a big help. So uh, I'm a big believer in it. Yeah, I look back at your career in '68, '69, and '70 when you started. The team was an incredible 28 and five in those three seasons, uh, and, and it just just amazes me. And the, the closest thing I guess we've seen would be 2010 and 2011 in, in recent time uh, uh, to to a record that even would come close to that, and it all came undone as we know in in 12. Well, when you look back on that and you look at that three year period, what was the magic in in those three years that uh, that your team bottled up and what what had become a great decade for the Razorbacks in the 60s? Yeah, it was the the 60s were. A terrific year. I mean, t- terrific time, decade for for Arkansas. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it, you know you go back to old cliches, but I mean you know coaches coach and players play, and you know when you end up, it's like Coach Royal said one when, when he was asked one day, he said, "Coach, it looked like the best team won today," and he said they usually do, and we were you know at the as uh, at the top of the of the you know, voting poll, uh, for, you know, for, uh, rankings. And, uh, it was just, a, it was a very, uh, it was a very fertile time for Arkansas and we made the best. Did we, you still there or did we lose him? Yeah. Okay. Well, what should you say? What's your thoughts on the game today? Uh, when, when your career came to a conclusion at Arkansas after three years, you, you had nearly every, passing record there there was to have uh, from uh, career touchdown passes at 29 to passing yards at nearly 4,600 yards to uh, the single season passing yards at 1662 and you look at the numbers that quarterbacks and offenses are putting up today when you watch today's game versus the game you played in what what thoughts go through your mind about the offenses well well, they 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 throw the ball a lot more and they have you know they have running plays that are really have really turned into to passing statistics. Um, so it's it's a great 
time to be a quarterback. And uh, if, if if you're after records, other than other than win losses, it's the only the only record that really makes a difference with players is the W's and the L's. And um, but it, it you're right. I mean, it, it's it's a whole different whole different ball game now. And uh, speed, uh, speed always uh, is a is a huge factor. Um, and I think we're I'm so thrilled with with Jefferson and how he played in his first game, particularly when he tucks that ball and runs with it for you know 60, 65 yards. He's he he can be a he can be a real difference maker. Bill Montgomery with his former Razorback quarterback here on the morning rush. Bill, I want to stay right there with what you just said about K.J. Jefferson because there's a good chunk of people listening that were disappointed, particularly in his first-half performance. As a guy that's played quarterback at the University of Arkansas in the pinnacle of Razorback football, how much pressure is on Arkansas quarterback? Quite a bit. Um, it's, it, I mean, I love, I'm 72 years old, so <laughs> we're going back 50-something years here. With a with uh, you know memories of that were very fond to me, but I remember the first game I, that I started was against Oklahoma State in 1968, and we went went out and laid a big goose egg in the first half, and I thought I was through. I thought he was the coach Royals was going to sit me on the bench, and never to never to surface again. And um, he came over to me and he said, "You're my quarterback. Get out there and show him what you can do." And we came back in the second half and had a terrific comeback, and and then you know literally it it it's it's it took off. I mean we we lost five games in three years, and three of them were to the University of Texas, and that's no that, that just shows you the, the how intense this this rivalry can be, but between Arkansas and Texas, and I'm you know I'm. I always go with the, go with the Hogs, no matter who they're playing. But you know, I think this game is going to be uh, very key for Jefferson, and and I think it's going to be very key for him to be able to run the ball, uh, you know, take it down and take off with it. Uh, that that drives defensive coaches crazy. Bill, you just referenced great memories, and I think one just stood out to you is Coach Boyle's coming over to you during the Oklahoma State game, and. I felt when the state lost a son or a father or a grandpa, however you looked at him, when he passed away a few years ago, what was going through your mind when you heard about the passing of the late, great Frank Broyles? Uh, it, it was, you know, it, I, mean, I knew that the day was coming. I had made a visit uh, up there to just – me and him and visit for 45 minutes uh, a couple of months before he passed. And so I knew that he, that, that the day was coming and, and uh, uh, he, he taught me a lot. I mean, he, he taught all of us a lot. He was, a, he was a great, uh, great leader and uh, had new, new football and knew the, knew the game, knew the, knew the statistics, knew everything that you could, that you could want. And, he, and then he could, come off the football field and, and look like a, a United States Senator. I mean, he just was, he had all the intangibles and, and, uh, was just a, uh, wonderful coach. Yeah. You're a, you're a Texas player. You're from there. Um, but you came to Arkansas and, and in a lot of cases, when a Texas player is on an Arkansas roster, it's because the university of Texas didn't give him an opportunity. How motivating was that? For you, is that part of your story? I don't, I don't know your recruitment story, but for many, that has been the case and how they ended up as a Razorback. How motivating is that when you get into this particular game against the Longhorns? Well, it's it's very motivating, but it, you know, it's just it's a, it's just a credit to the you know, with well, the University of Texas. You're right; they generally get the players that they want. Back in those days, you could you could take 55 freshman players. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a uh, and and Coach Royal would take players that he wasn't going to play himself, but he would also take players that if he could get them, he didn't have to play them. So, um, you know, he would he would sign kids, and they'd want to go to the University of Texas. In my case, when he when he made a visit to my house, uh, you know, I asked him if I'd get a chance to play quarterback. 
and Coach Royal and his and the way he, the, his great manners uh, said, "You'll get a chance to play because you're a good football player." I can't promise you that you're going to play quarterback. Two weeks later, three weeks later, Coach Royal comes down. And Coach Royal says, "We're changing our offense. We're going to make you the you know you're going to play this offense and it's going to be great." You know, you never know what's what's going to happen. I mean, but Coach Broyles did, in fact, change the offense. He did, in fact, do what he said he was going to do with me. And, you know, uh, I have, again, great respect for it. But it changed the whole direction of Arkansas football. Razorback great Bill Montgomery with us here on the Morning Rush. You played in the most famous Arkansas-Texas game of all time in 1969. If you had a chance to talk to the team or explain to them what – this game and this series means uh, to former players, to the fans, to everyone. What what would your words be? Uh, my words would 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 be along the lines of you, this: this uh, ship doesn't come sailing by too too often. You need to make the most of the opportunity that you have at hand, and the opportunity that you have at hand is that you're going to be you're going to kick off at at uh, six o'clock. And you better give it everything you've got. Give it every play on every play. Just never quit and give it the best effort that you can give. And and if you do that, you know you know we'll see we'll see where the score lays out. But I think it'll be a good one for the for the Hogs. We need to you know obviously make less mistakes than than what we made in the first game. But that happens. I mean that's a first game sort of uh, performance. Um, you know, sloppy first half, and then came out in the second half, and the defense, you know, perked up, and then the offense was. So it was. I, I think it. You know, when, when, from my perspective, the comeback in the second half was impressive, and these guys can capitalize on that. Bill, are you gonna get a chance to make a trip up to Fayetteville this Saturday? Well, I was gonna come to the game, uh, and uh, I've just recently had some health issues uh, that. Um, uh, have made me uh, not be a candidate for uh, – I'm thrilled that there are going to be 77,000 people, and I think that's, a, that's, that's awesome that we're, we're going to have this um, blowout attendance and everybody wear your mask. And um, But uh, I'll be up – I will be up later in the season. Well, Bill, I'm sorry to hear about the health issues, man. Hope everything's okay. Um, I guess it's be- okay. Okay, good. Um, Bill, before we close you out, uh, that Texas game that Tommy referred to, it's the one everyone remembers, but you also got a chance to compete against Archie Manning in the Sugar Bowl 1970. Would you say Archie's the best quarterback that you ever dueled against? Yes. Not even close? Well, not even close. What What do you remember about that game? Oh, uh, I'm you know it's just we were we were heavily favored. Uh, I think to win. The, I don't know what the line was, but I know we were favored to win the game. And we had some issues uh, that I mean we our kicking game wasn't quite uh, what it normally was. Uh, so we, you know, I don't want to make excuses. Uh, Ole Miss had uh, Ole Miss had a good team. They had a great quarterback, and and they. Uh, they played hard, and I mean, we still at that at that uh, we had a we had a chance at the at the end of the game to come back, and and so we almost made it back, but uh, uh, you know, it, it just it didn't work out. But Archie's a, Archie was a, was a great player. He was a great player, and uh, and they had a they had a very good competitive team. Well, Bill, we really appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. Whatever the health issues may be, hope you get to feeling better and uh, enjoy the game on Saturday night when the Arkansas Razorbacks, your Arkansas Razorbacks, take on the Texas Longhorns at 6. We're going to go get them. All right. Love it. All right, the, thank, thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. It. One of the greats, one of the all-time greats, Bill Montgomery with us, 28-5 uh, and five in, in three seasons. That is, uh, that, you know, for quarterbacks in three seasons, that's that's – it's the high eighty-seven point five percent win percentage in those three years. I think he holds that. Yeah, I mean, Arkansas for, highest record percentage-wise. So really appreciate whatever Bill's going through right yeah. now from a health standpoint. Hope he gets through it because uh, I know that it, he really wanted to be up yeah. here this weekend. But you, you can hear in his voice what this game and what this series means to him. Um, you know, it, it's in so many ways. Even though Arkansas's 
um, way behind in the, the all-time series record. Uh, everybody understands the weight of a victory against Texas, whether it's a good Texas team, a bad Texas team, particularly when you can have one on your home field. And uh, you, you could hear it uh, from Bill Montgomery right there, what, what those Texas games meant to him and those losses <laughs> against Texas in his playing days you know, still stick with him. He can tell you exactly what happened in those five losses and too many of them to Texas. You could hear that. So, hey, great place to, uh, if you're not going to head to the game this week, great place to watch it would be at 906 Cocktail and Cigar Lounge. That place will be uh, uh, covered with hog fans, I'm sure, I'm sure, on Saturday night. They'll open at 4 o'clock on Saturday. They're open at 4 o'clock every day. They close at midnight during the week and 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturdays. Great menu, always uh, great cigars that you can find there, top-shelf wines and liquors. It's going to be a great time watching the game at 906 Cocktail and Cigar Lounge. Sample, indulge, and escape at 906 Garrison Avenue, downtown Fort Smith. We'll push Watch Your Brief Wednesday back into the last segment of the hour, but we do want to spend some time here. We've been telling you guys about this uh, Branson giveaway that we've been doing. We're going to be, Tommy and I are going to be up there at the landing this Friday for a show from... Uh, 6 to 9 a.m. on the morning rush. And, uh, Tommy, you've got two winners of yeah. a big giveaway we've been talking about. Yeah, we've about. had a chance for everyone to enter for the last 10 days or so, and we've got two packages that include uh, not only uh, hotel accommodations at the Hilton there at the Landing and, and down in downtown, which is a, a, a wonderful area. They're going to have the Powerboat Nationals there this weekend. So we've had a lot of people sign up and uh, really interested in uh, – in making a great weekend trip to Branson. You get dinner, a gift basket, a whole lot of stuff. This is a great prize package that we've got not just one, but we got two of these here uh, to give away. So let's congratulate George Bolt of Rogers. You are one of the winners. And Monty Come Madden. Boy, George. And Monty. And Monty Madden of Alpena. Those are the, uh, the two winners. We'll be in touch with uh, your certificate that you can claim and uh, how to set up your trip. But uh, George Bolt, Monty Madden are winners of the uh, great giveaway to the Grand Prix of Missouri Powerboat Nationals, which we were told yesterday are coming back next year to Branson as well. How about so, that? So, so congrats. Uh, we'll be there Friday, like you said. Uh, we're going to be uh, there at the landing doing the show on Friday morning. Congrats to both of those uh, gentlemen. So Texas has moved up to number 18, there's 15 in the AP poll. I know a lot of people are curious to see where they were going to end up ranking 12. Well, they moved all the way up to 15. Hopefully that game will get as much attention as possible. It's already on ESPN primetime. Greg McElroy, Joe Tessitore are going to be on the call for that. SEC Nation's going to be in town, and uh, there's a lot of anticipation. If you want to bet... On Arkansas, I think it's. I think you've got six and a half points right now. I don't know mm-hmm. if that line has moved or not. But Tommy, we were talking about it in hour number one. That one guy had a fourteen team parlay, won about seventy nine grand out on a ten dollar bet. And when's the last time you talked about a fourteen bet parlay hitting? There's always one or two that you're just like <laughs> yeah, but, so close. I mean, you just you know, ten dollar bet pays nearly eighty grand. Seventy was it seventy nine thousand nine thirty? The reason you don't talk about it much these these rarely happen. So that's why it's. Nowhere. He had some overs in there. He got the Connecticut at uh, Fresno State game right. Uh, th- this was uh, is a rare feat to hit. It's hard enough to get a three game or a five game, but a fourteen game. Woo! That's why the odds are so long. Tell you what else is uh, rare when a college football crowd registers on the Richter scale, and that's exactly what Virginia Tech did Earthquake! on. Thursday night when they took on the North Carolina Tar Heels, the Inner Sandman. It's one of the best traditions Mm -hmm. in college football. And I would like to see Arkansas at some point in time during the Texas game. We asked the question earlier, what would it take for the Razorback, Reynolds Razorback Stadium to register on the Rector's Dale? And someone texted in earlier, Jalen Catalan pick six would blow the place up. I'd love to see Jalen Catalan pick six. I'd love to see uh, Day Day Bishop take one back to the house early on, Greg Brooks take a punt return, whatever it may be, it's got to be a touchdown to get on that Richter scale. Yeah, what you need is, you know, Texas to get the ball first, force them three and out, punt to the Hogs and get a punt return for a touchdown, something of that. You need it early, take the lead, something in the first quarter where everybody's, uh, you know, still on the, the edge of their seat for this one. So something early like what we saw in the Alabama game with Wingo would uh, would probably – produce that kind of response and we'll talk about crowd competition coming up because Arkansas has had some great crowds over the years where would it stack up 
if this Texas game ends up being a diaper dandy like we think it could be. And, you know, if it's full, if all the tickets that have been sold and distributed are filled, you should have an all-time stadium record. Attendance record. You should have a stadium what record. What was Alabama? Uh, 70, seven, seven, I think it was right at 76,000. So, good man. Media Get guy. your handy dandy media guy out find there. It in thirty seconds for the clock hits. So that's uh, what kind of crowd you're anticipating being with standing room. You can get up to I think about eighty thousand if they fill up that top of the north end zone, and it, it, it's an anticipated ticket. I know Tommy's going. I'm going. We've had uh, a bunch of people text us both to try and get tickets. It's not an easy ticket to get. Maybe there'll be a people outside selling. Baby. It's that time of the year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all of the pro and college football action this season. Get all of the updated odds, props, and contests, including the online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest, the world's largest. Largest 200,000 NFL Survivor Contest open now at Bet Online. Here's what you have to do: head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 100% welcome bonus. Take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the Thursday, September 9th season opener between the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wager is going to be refunded for up to $25 for new customers only when signing up and using the promo code NFL. 100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts.